G'day everyone, I'm Viv Chandra, this is Scott Reed from Knights of Dice, we're both from Knights of Dice. We've been playing a little bit of Age of Sigma lately and we thought we'd put the cameras on to perhaps try and capture some battle reports and see how that works and if it's something that works and it's fun, we might try and do a few more. So, um, it's my ogres versus Scott's dwarves, yep. but they're not called dwarves, are they? Dispossessed. Dispossessed. Um, just a straight pitched battle, normal fight, no battle plan or scenario or anything like that, just a, you know, just a... A fight. And then we might play some battle plans as we go on. We'll see how things go. So there we go. Um, we'll set the table up and jump into it. So this is the table setup that we've decided on. It's a normal 6x4, as you can see. We've used some of our Tabula Raza Gothic Ruin building. So these are our MDF kits that uh, we sell at Knights of Dice. Just painted very quickly and very simply. And we thought we'd put a couple of trees into the ruin. So, you know, it's been there for a while. Trees have taken over and... You know, there we go. So that's the battle plan. There's no special terrain features at all. Again, being uh, only our third game, we thought we'd keep things very simple. So we'll have a look at the deployment next of uh, both the ogres and the dwarves. So here we go. This is our role to determine who sort of divides in the, the table. The highest player gets to decide. So I've rolled a five. Scott's rolled a three. How the table is going to be split. So again, you get the choice through the middle, through the long edge, or that weird L shape. I reckon I'm going to choose the L shape. Okay. So we've split the table now using that L shape. So down this side and across the back, and then down the back side and across here. And uh, Scott, being my opponent in this game, gets to choose which uh, deployment zone he wants, and he's chosen this section in here. So let's set up some figures, and we'll come back, talk about our armies, and then start playing some Age of Sigma. All right, Scott, you want to tell us about what you're doing? Yep. So Go I've for de it. deployed a unit of Iron Drakes here. Hopefully deal with these lead belchers. I've got a unit of warriors with shields and hand weapons here. There's an organ gun perched up on this building. I don't know how they got it up there. Got a gyro bomber hiding behind this building here. This is my general. I'm using Balagar iron hammer rules. Another unit of uh, warriors here with two-handed weapons. A unit of thunder is here. That's my army. Sweet. We'll have a look at the ogres next. So I've deployed predominantly on this flank here, a unit of ogres at the front here, second unit, uh, unit of ogres behind it, and the butcher in the forest. Around this side I've deployed my lead belt just to sort of try and cover that sort of, that open field that you can see here. Then my giant, you know, I don't know what to do with the giant, he's always a target, because he's scary, right? So I don't, know, I don't know if I've got him in the right spot, but you know, that's where the giant is. Third unit of ogres here, and then the unit of lead belchers down this side. So that's my deployment. We'll see how things uh, play out. It's an interesting deployment. I've never deployed like this before. Scott's never deployed like this before. So I think it'll be interesting. Uh, so we're doing hero phase. My general here is going to cast Inspiring Presence on this unit of warriors. Oh, yeah, I forgot to sort of mention that Scott, I gave the first turn to Scott. So it's his hero phase. Move this unit of warriors. They're going to run, and I'm going to use their horn blower to make them run eight so I don't have to roll. Try and get a bit closer to the ogres and maybe get out of the way of the thunderer's guns. So these, this unit of warriors is also going to run, and I'm going to use the musician to make them run eight so I don't have to roll. My general here is going to run and try and catch up with that unit. So he moves four, plus a d6. So another five. He's going to go there. I'm going to run with this unit of Thunderers because they can't shoot this turn, they won't be in range. So they're just going to run eight inches using the Musician just to sort of make sure those Warriors aren't quite out on their own. I'm going to leave my unit of Iron Drakes here, so they're not vulnerable to the fire from the lead belchers. I'm going to run with my Gyro Bomber, so it moves 12 plus a d6, so 18 inches. Nice. So that's the Dwarf's uh, hero turn movement. I don't know if you can land something in terrain like that. You can fly. <laughs> it can fly. You guys can tell us. Obviously there's no shooting because nothing is in range and no charges because nothing is in range. So that's the uh, Dwarves' first turn. 
So during my hero phase, I was going to have my butcher cast the more on these guys, but uh, one of the lovely things I'm loving about this game is the ability to pre-measure, and he's out of range, so just out of range. So I'm not going to cast that. Um, I'll cast Inspiring Presence on this unit of Ogres at the front here. So I'll move this unit of Ogres up. I won't run them. I'll just, I'll just move them up six inches, so somewhere to about here. So I'm going to run this unit of Ogres up sort of somewhere around here. Ah, again, eight inches to sort of somewhere around here. Um, next time, I would love something better than a two for my run, please. There we go. That's those guys. So I'm going to run this unit of lead belchers as well. This might all be completely wrong, but we'll see what happens. So we rolled a four in the forest there. So for a total uh, move of ten inches, it's a sort of... This dude a little bit ahead. Let's do this dude back here. So I'm going to run my butcher up over here. So a total move of 10 inches. And I think I'll try and put him just in here. So I'm going to try and run my giant sort of somewhere around here. He's going to move an of 8 plus 2. So total movement of 10 inches to sort of somewhere around about here. So this unit of uh, balls at the back here, I'm just going to move those guys up here. They, they won't run, just a regular move to sort of around here or so. So that's the end of the Dwarf's first turn and the Ogre's first turn. This deployment is super interesting. Um, in the other two games that we've played, you know, there's always been action in the first turn, but this time it's just positioning. No one's in range for shooting. There's no charges. Um, so I think we'll see a lot of stuff happening in the second turn. So let's roll off of that and see who's going to go first. So the Dwarves are rolling black dice, the Ogres are rolling red dice. Six, the Ogres uh, will take this turn. So during my hero phase, my Butcher is going to cast them more on these guys. I need 18 inch range, which those guys are in. And it's a casting power of seven or more, which we get. Now they'll take uh, D3 mortal wounds. So two mortal wounds on those guys. It's too dead. And is the more still hungry on a four, five or six? It is. So it takes another D3 mortal wounds. Two more. Is the more still hungry? It is. This is brutal, Scott. I'm sorry, man. Takes three wounds. And it, is it still hungry? It is. Takes two wounds. Is it still hungry? No. Fuck! <laughs> So I'm going to move this unit of ogres six inches over this way, sort of somewhere around here. I'm going to move this unit of lead belchers up, so sort of somewhere around here. I'm going to move my butcher to around here. So I'm going to move this unit of bulls up here, to somewhere around here. And this unit of lead belchers, I'll move these guys up as well. To somewhere sort of around here. So my giant's going to run up through this gap here. Eight inches at the moment because he's unwounded plus five. It's a 13 inch move. Which sort of brings him to sort of around here somewhere. So these uh, lead belchers over here are going to fire at this unit over here. Now they've moved, so they only get D3 shots each. 13 shots. So these are hitting on fours and wounding on threes. Two, four, six, seven on threes. So three hit at minus one ring. Five plus saves, so they get six plus saves. No, three dead. Three dead. So we're going to shoot with these guys. Again, it's uh, a D3 for these guys because they moved. They get a 12 inch range. So we'll try, yeah, those guys are in range. These guys just out. That's disappointing, because those guys will shoot me. So, uh, D3 shots each. Jesus. So another 13. So again, these are hitting on fours. And wounding on threes. So four hits. Six plus saves. Two save, two dead. So during my shooting phase, this unit of, uh, what are they, Scott? Warriors. Warriors. 
lost three guys from shooting from the lead belchers. This unit of lead belchers caused two casualties on these guys. So this unit of ogres is going to charge the unit of warriors here on eight, so they easily get in there. My butcher is going to charge these guys. I want a seven. I don't think he'll make that. No. Nope. So we'll do the ogres here on these guys. So there we go, after the interruption on the phone there, these guys rolled uh, an 11 for their charge, so they're true and uh, well and truly in there. We'll start off with this combat here. Um, I get four for the crusher and three for uh, each for the other guys. So they're hitting on fours. And wounding on threes. So two wounds to save against. No rend on these, Scott. Five plus. So, two hits go through doing four wounds. So I'm going to pick this unit to fight now. They're going to pile in. And they're all going to throw some attacks. These guys hit on fours and then wound on threes. Not great. Three get through. Two get, three get through. I just have a save of five, but the Ren takes them up to six. So we save one and two go through. We'll do this combat over here. Again, it's the same deal. Fours and threes with no rend. Five plus saves. So okay. save three of them. Yep, so lose two guys. So I'm now attacking with this unit of warriors. They're armed with hand weapons, so they hit on threes, wound on fours with no rend. Three hits. Two wounds. Two go through. No rend. No rend. So fives or more. So we save one of them, and one of them takes a wound. So now we need to do battle shock, but this unit over here is immune to it, so because of inspiring presence. So all those guys just get taken off with casualties. Ogres don't need to take any battle shock here because they haven't lost any models, which is making the ogres super strong. Um, so let's have a look at the other unit. So now we've got battle shock over here. So they've lost six guys. They are bravery six, I believe. So, so that's, that's that's the, the worst possible result. That unit is wiped out. That's the unit gone. So it's the dwarf hero phase for this turn. So my general here is going to use his command ability on these guys, which lets them attack, get, gives them one extra attack this turn. During his hero phase. So I don't get During to fight back. Turn. No, it's oh. during the turn they get to attack they get an extra attack. Okay, sweet. Yep. The gyro bomber is going to make a flyby over this unit and land over here somewhere. Okay. So uh, I've got a unit of miners in reserve and they are going to dig up right here behind these lead, belch lead belchers here. So they have to be nine inches away. So they're going to come up here. So while Scott's off reading his war scrolls to find out what his dwarfs do, <laughs> there's the miners that popped up uh, behind my lead belchers here. This giant is in, roll, in range of the troll hammer torpedo, and I'm going to shoot at that. But it looks like it's just... Nah, he's in. He's let's, in? Yeah, yeah, let's play it. It's more fun that way. Okay. He's just in. We've decided that he's in, so <laughs> shooting at that. And then, and then everyone else is shooting at the lead belchers here? Maybe. Maybe, okay. I might split fire. Okay. Troll hammer torpedo. Threes to hit. Misses. That's a shame. Yeah. The rest of the unit, because they haven't moved, they can shoot twice. So, so four are shooting at the lead belchers here. The other five are shooting at those guys there. So eight shots at these guys. Threes to hit, threes to wound. Minus one rend. Five get through. Two get through. Minus one rend. So six plus safe. So two wounds on one of these guys. So we've got so four shots on those guys. No, uh, another five guys. So it's ten shots on those guys. Oh well. Three to hit, three to wound. Uh, that's better. Three to wound. So minus one rend, so sixes. So save two of them, take three wounds. The dead ogre. This guy's already taken a wound, so he dies. So this guy here, the one 
remaining Thunderer is going to shoot at this unit of Ogres uh, with his one shot. He gets plus one to hit because he is a veteran. So three to hit, doesn't hit. This so Gyro Bomber is dropping bombs on this unit of Ogres. On a four plus, it does D3 mortal wounds. So it does it. It does three mortal wounds. So one dead Ogre. This guy dies yep. and we leave one wound. There's the guy. one on somebody else, on this guy over here. No one. Where is the one? There we go. And this guy dies. Also has the clatter gun, which it is going to shoot at the unit of lead belters here. Four attacks. Four to hit, three to wound. All hit. Two wounds. So we've got two wounds on these guys with the minus one ring, gives them a six plus save. So we don't save any of those. And one of these guys take two wounds. So I'm gonna load three barrels of the organ gun. I need a three plus or it jams. So I do it. Each of the barrels does D6 attacks. They're all shooting at the giant. So 11 shots. Three is to hit the giant. That many. Three is to wound the giant. The giant takes five wounds at minus one rend. So minus one rend gives the giant a, five, a six plus save. So he takes five wounds. So the dwarves during their shooting phase, these guys, what are they called, Iron Drakes? Yep, they split fire. They split fire, killed one of the ogres over here. That's him there, so we'll take battle shock later on. And they put two wounds on these lead belchers over here. The organ gun over here stuffed three barrels full of shot and uh, put five wounds onto the giant. And on the other side of the table over here, the lone little man left, what is he? He's a thunderer. A thunderer tried to shoot this unit of ogres and did do nothing. The gyro bomber, which came down from the building down here, dropped some bombs on those guys, killed one of them, put a wound on the other guy, and that's him sitting there, and shot the unit of lead belchers with its gun at the front and did two wounds on those guys. So that's the dwarves uh, shooting face. My general here is going to charge into this unit of uh, ogres, and he easily makes it. This guy is going to charge that same unit. <laughs> Doesn't make it. Doesn't make it. <laughs> oh, maybe he does. Let's just put him in there, man, for fun. Oh, he kind of, no wait. So it's going to be half an inch, right? Yeah, no, he doesn't, it doesn't make oh, it. Let's put it's him like, in there, man. Let's just put him in there. No, no, it's all right. <laughs> okay. Take the room, pile in. The miners is going to try a, a charge at these guys. I don't no, think they're going to make he... it. No, nah, they don't make no, it. Bummer. I'm going to fight some combat now. I'm going to start off by piling in with these guys. And they're going to attack. Fours to hit, threes to wound. Only two hit, threes to wound. One wound gets through at minus one rend. So minus one gives him a six plus save. He doesn't, so this guy here takes a second wound. They also get an extra attack from the command ability from before, so fours to hit. One, threes to wound. No. No, disappointing. So now my ogres get to fight back. Now they're in contact with the general and with this unit. Um, but um, And the gyrocopter. And, and they're close enough to the gyrocopter too, but we'll attack the unit that fought me back. So I get four attacks for that dude, and three attacks for the other one, hitting on fours and winning on threes. Doing two wins. Any rend? Uh, no rend. Five plus saves. So no, two, just two four dead. wins. Four wounds. So my general has four attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound. All hit. Three wounds. So at minus one, the ogres have a six plus save, and we don't save any of them. So they do D3 damage each. D3 damage each. Uh, that's two, uh, five. So we take five wounds, that kills this guy here, and gives this guy three wounds. So the gyrocopter has D3 attacks with its rotor blades. Three attacks. Fives to hit, fours to wound. Two hit. One wound, no rend. So no rend means I need a five to save that last ogre? No, and he dies. So that's unit wiped out, no need to a battle shock.
So this unit has to take Battle Shock because they didn't get Sparring Presence cast on them this turn. So they have a Bravery of six. They're dead. Okay, so third turn. The uh, dwarf. Roll red. I'm red, am I? Okay, cool. Dwarf. So dwarf turn. So it's the dwarf hero phase. He's going to cast Oath of Vengeance on the Gyrocopter. So that gets to attack twice in melee. So my miners here are going to move up. Just their four inch movement. They're not going to run. Because they want to do some, some shooting this time. So my gyro bomber is going to fly over this unit. And spin around. My general here is going to move four towards that unit. Load three barrels on the organ gun again. So on a th three plus, it doesn't jam. It is fine. D6 attacks per barrel, all on the giant again. So not great, seven. Threes to hit and threes to wound. All hit. Four wounds at minus one rend. So minus one rend on the giant gives him a six plus save. Takes four more wounds, putting him on a total of nine. We're going to try and shoot that troll hammer torpedo at the giant again. No one's moved, so it's still in the same range. Three to hit. Again, it misses. Eight shots on the lead belchers. Threes to hit. Threes to wound. Four wounds. So four wounds on the lead belchers. Minus one gives them a six plus save. They don't save any of them. Man, so one guy dies, and this guy takes two wounds. Ten shots on the ogres here. Three to hit. Three to wound. Ooh, not great. Three wounds. So three wounds again, minus one ring, gives them a six plus save. Which they don't make any, so one of them takes three wounds. So we're going to chuck some blasting charges at this unit of ogres with the miners. All ten of them are shooting. Fours to hit, threes to wound. Three to wound. Uh, that many. Five. So five wounds on the lead belchers, minus two rend. No save for these guys, so they take five wounds. This guy takes two and dies. He can join the dead guy over there. And we'll put three wounds on the other lead belcher over here. That was brutal. So this lone guy is still kicking. He's still got a gun, so he's going to shoot at those lead belchers. He gets plus one to hit because he is a veteran. So he hits on a three and then wounds on a three. Doesn't do anything. Gyro Bomb is going to drop D3. Uh, on a 4 plus it drops D3 bombs on these guys, so it does it, 2 bombs, that's 2 mortal wounds, that guy's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so two, 2 mortal wounds on this guy, yeah it kills him. It's also going to shoot its clatter gun, which is 4 attacks, 4's to hit, 1 gets through, 3 to wound, wounds, minus 1 wound. On the, on the lead belchers. Yep. So the minus one Ren gives me at least a six plus save, which they make. Try and do a couple of charges. So my my general here is going to try and charge that unit of lead belchers. And he does it. Does he? Yeah, yes, easy. Easy. Yeah, easy. The gyrocopter is also going to charge, which it does. The miners over here are going to try and get rid of that last wound on that guy, so they're going to charge, which they make. Yeah, easy. You might as well just pile in and fight. Oh wait, no, I've got to decide. I'll just pile in now. So I'm going to attack with the Gyrocopter first. Because I cast uh, Oath of Vengeance on it before, it's going to get to attack with its Rotor Blades twice. So it's 2d3. So that is 5 attacks. Hitting on 5s, wounding on 4s. 3 get through. All three get through, minus one rend. So no rend. So there's no rend on these guys, so it's a five plus save for them. And we make one, but lose two. So one guy takes two wounds. Okay, so we'll do this combat here, because this guy's about to die. He's already got two casualties next to him. So they normally get two attacks in combat, but he's the leader, so he gets three. Hitting on fours, and wounding on threes. So two wounds. Five plus saves. No, snake eyes. So each of those does two wounds. So I lose four guys. 
So I've got my general here. He does have an ability once per game where he's going to attack twice. I kind of want to get rid of that unit, so I think I'll use it now. No, actually I'll say that. Four, four attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound. So you get through. One gets through. Minus one rend. So uh, minus one rend gives him a six plus save, which he doesn't make. So two wounds. And that's enough to kill him. So now my lead belcher will attack back. You're hitting on fours and wounding on threes. So one of them goes through. Three plus save. Makes a save. He's fine. So my leader here has a steam drill. He's going to try and use that. So it's force to hit. Doesn't hit. And the rest of the guys there, which there is one, two, three, four, five. Going to just attack with their picks. Force to hit. Three to wound. One wound. Minus one rend. So they have minus one rend, so it's a six plus save, which he doesn't make, and dies. So we're doing battle shock for this unit. They are bravery six. So three plus one, two, three, four. They're going to lose one guy. So on the lead belchers, their battle shock, they got bravery six, so I've taken two. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> off. So uh, five plus my two is seven. This guy dies. So it's the Ogre's hero phase in turn three. My butcher is going to cast the more on this guy. He needs a seven or more, which he doesn't get. So I'm just going to do a little bit of movement here. I've got to stay three inches away, so we'll just move those guys there. Move these guys here, prepare myself for the charge. That's obviously coming up a little bit later on. So that's the movement over here. So we'll move these ogres over here. They're six inches to somewhere around there. Take his three wounds with him and he can follow up. So we'll do the giant's four inch move to sort of over here somewhere. So it wouldn't normally be the ogre's shooting phase right now, but the dwarves had a super powerful turn um, and took out all my lead belches. So I have no shooting, so we'll move straight into charges. So this unit of ogres is going to try and charge these guys, which on a 10 they will easily do. So we'll move him in and carry his three wounds with him, and this guy will also jump in. So now we'll try and charge the giant into these guys. Now he's already taken nine wounds, so he's only got movement of four, plus the dice roll. Oh, hang on, it's two dice roll for a charge, isn't it? Yep, there so that's go. a one. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the giant's going to charge these guys on a uh, seven. He's in there. Which is going to charge his hero, which he does. And then my ogre is going to charge the gyro bomber, which they do. So we'll do this combat here first because the giant's already taken uh, nine wounds. He's only got three left. So um, we'll do his first attack with his massive club, which is uh, does d6 hits. So four of them. Hitting on threes and wounding on threes. So that's those two. So I have five plus saves, so it's going to go to six because of the rend. No, two, two dead guys. So now we'll do the headbutt with the giant. So he only gets one of these, hitting on fours. And winning on threes. Then he has no, his mighty no. kick hitting on threes. And wounding on threes. Yep. So the minus two rend for the mighty kick doesn't give them a save. So it does d3 wounds. Just one. So I totally forgot to grab somebody and stuff them in my bag. So we'll choose this guy here. I need to roll anything but a one. And we pick him up and stuff him in my bag. So that's a lost cause over there. So I'm going to pick my general to fight first. So he's going to fight uh, Viv's general. Four attacks, three to hit, three to wound. He also has an ability that he can use once per game to attack twice. So he's going to do that. You so didn't use it last time, did I you? I did not. No. So I'm going to just roll the eight attacks now. Okay. Freeze to hit. Freeze to wound. So four get through at minus one rend. So minus one rend on my butcher still gives him a six plus at least. But we're looking at D3 wounds here. So holy fuck. So all of them go through and they do D3 wounds on all of those attacks. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five wounds. All right, so I'm coming over to this side of the table for this combat over here because I've already got one ogre with three wounds on it. 
um, versus the, the full unit over there versus, versus the gyro bomber. So um, the, the hero dude or the leader plus the other guys, these are hitting on fours and winning on threes. I get to re-roll one because of the double clubs. And winning on threes. So I've got four plus saves. All save except for one. So it does two wounds. Two dead. Uh, so I'm going to attack this unit with my uh, gyro bomb here. So it gets d3 attacks. So two. Fives to hit. Both do it. Fours to wound. Both do it. <laughs> So no rend on these, gives them a 5 plus save. Hey, we make both of them. So I've got my Iron Drakes here, they're not great in combat, so they hit on 4s, we not 5s. I've got 8 attacks. 1, 2, 3, 4. Three, wound, 3 get through. Yes, that's alright. It's not bad. So no rend on these, gives me a 5 plus save. I make one of them but take 2, so this guy dies. And we put a wound on the last remaining hero. So I've got my last guy here. Uh, he's going to attempt to get another wound on the giant, hopefully. So hits on a four, wounds on a three. No, nothing. So my butcher's going to attack back over here. He gets two attacks, hitting on fours. And wounding on threes. Fire. So time for some battle shock. My unit here. This is not going to go well. No, so he dies. So the giant drakes have a bravery of seven, so I'm not too worried about them. Uh, they're fine. So my battle shock on these ogres over here, they have bravery six. So uh, if I roll a six, the other guy dies. No. So this is the end of the third turn. Third turn? I think so. Maybe fourth. I don't know. We'll find out in a minute. But this is the end of both of our turns. Massive amount of carnage has been happening over here in the last couple of turns. I've got one ogre left in combat with these guys. The giant managed to clean up the rest of the miners that were over here. On the other side of the table, again, huge amounts of carnage. This one lonely little dude's probably crying. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had lead belters over here, a second unit of ogres. Um, my butcher's taken five wounds. I couldn't do any damage back. Um, it's been a brutal round. Okay, so the roll to see who goes first. <laughs> oh. So the ogres take the first turn. This will get it for you. So during my hero phase, the butcher will cast the Great Moor on this uh, um, gyro bomber, needing a seven. No. So the giant's going to try and move into this combat. Now, he's badly wounded, so he only moves four inches. Um, which is sort of going to bring him to about here. So I don't have anything left to shoot with, so it's charges now. The giant uh, is going to try and uh, charge into these guys on six. Which will bring him to half an inch. And he has three inches on his club anyway, so there we go. Okay, so this is a real tough decision to determine which one goes first. Because the giant's got a lot of wounds on him, so he could easily die. My butcher's got five wounds on him, so he could easily die. This guy's probably going to get killed, but, you know, we'll use the giant first because he's fun, right? So we get d6 for his massive club. So four hits. These are hitting and wounding on threes. So two. And just before you take that away, Scott, I'm going to pick one of them up and stuff them in my bag. So the results of my pick him up and stuff him in my bag, I'm going to choose this guy who's got the big grappling monster gum thing. They ignore the rend and four plus save. Save one. So that's one guy dead. So now the giant's headbutt on this unit is hitting on a four. No. His mighty kick, <coughs> His mighty kick hitting on a three. And wounding on a three. Got the first two rends, so it's a four plus save, which they make. I'm going to put... Three attacks on the ogre, and two attacks, uh, three attacks on the giant. So fours to hit and five to wound on both. So the ogre, two hits, two wounds, no rend. So no rend. It's fives. That's Takes one wound. wound. And the giant hitting on uh, fours, winning on fives. Two go through. Both wound, no rend. So five plus saves for the giant. Takes another wound. So sitting on ten wounds, he's got two left. So we'll attack with the butcher back. He's only got two wounds left. So he's uh, got two attacks on fours. Get fucked. 
in the dry copter now because my general can wait. D3 attacks. Two. Uh, one, sorry. Uh, four, five to hit, four to wound. Cocked. Hits. Wounds. Minus one wound. So saving it on a six. Oh, nope. One ogre takes a wound. So now my ogres will attack back, needing fours and threes. So three go through. Four plus save for the gyrocopter. Saves all of them. Oh man. So we've got my lone um, ogre here. He's the, what is he, the belcher or the crusher. So he gets four attacks hitting on fours. And winning on threes. So one goes through. No win. No win. Four plus save. So two wounds. So my guys here are going to take battle shock. Bravery seven. So they lose an extra guy. So these guys had one guy flee from combat. So for the ogres, their great beast skull or whatever is on a six. Another guy runs. No. So my general here is going to cast Oath of Vengeance on this unit of Ogres. Is, we're up to the Dwarf Hero phase right now. Yes, yeah. Dwarf Hero phase. Uh, so we, we played this wrong before. We did, but it had the same effect. Yeah. So... Casting it on my, on a my guys here. Of here. So your unit, we'll any an dispossessed attack. unit, gets one extra attack against this unit. Correct. Okay, cool. So I've decided to flee with the gyrocopter so that it can use its bombs. Now that's controversial. I don't know, you guys might be able to tell us. Can it still use its bombs after it's retreated? It's just going to flee to there. It's not going to be able to shoot because it's fleeing, but yep. it, it can drop its bombs. Okay, cool. So this lone guy is going to shoot at the general and try and soften him up a bit. Hitting on a three. Wounding on a three. Minus one rend. So six plus save. No. It's a wound. So it's got one wound left. So I've got six shots with these guys because they haven't moved. So, so if they don't move, they fire twice, right? Correct. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to split fire. Three on the ogre, three on the giant. Okay. On the ogre here, hitting on threes. Two do it. Wounding on threes. One gets through, minus one rend. So it's a uh, six plus to save him. No, he it's takes a wound. wound. On the, the giant, giant, threes. Two hit. No wounds. Uh, that could have been bad for the giant. This unit suffers D3 mortal wounds from the bombs. No, nope, doesn't do it. Lucky. So I'm going to go all in here and hope that I roll really well. I'm going to put two attacks on the giant, try and kill it, and one attack on the ogre and try and kill him. Yep. So the one attack on the ogre first, hitting on a five. No, it's four. Fours and, five. and fives. Hitting on a four. No. The other two, hitting on a four. One. Winning on a five. No. Okay, so we'll come back to that other attack in a minute. I'm going to lose my general, so I'm going to do his two attacks. Hitting on fours. Oh, get well, I've only got my general left, so he's going to throw his four attacks at the butcher. Hitting on threes. Two do it. Winning on threes. None. <laughs> so we'll do the ogre first. So he's got four attacks hitting him on fours. And get re-roll that. No, and wounding on threes. So two wounds. So there's no rend, so four plus saves. Saves one. So two wounds go three. We'll do the giant now. He's got ten wounds on him, but he still gets a d6 with his mighty club. Actually, before we do that, we're going to pick this dude up and stuff him in our bag. Oh, no, we don't. I say um, one hitting on a three. No. All right, let's do his uh, headbutt hitting on a four. And wounding on a three. And it's minus three rend. Yeah. That takes his armor down to five. He saves it. Ah, oh, bastard. So then he gets his mighty kick on a three. And wounding on a three. So it's a straight up save, no rend. Four plus. He saves it. Oh, you monkey. That unit is alive. So my only hope of wiping this unit out is battle shock on these guys. They're bravery six, right? Seven. Seven? Mm-hmm. They're fine. No, he's fine. He's fine. There we go. Mm -hmm. I think we played four turns, maybe five. I think it might have been five. I don't know. We'll find out during the editing. It might have been five. But, you know, at the beginning of that game, it just seemed like the ogres were unstoppable. They did a huge amount of damage early on. And um, 
you know, I, I'm no, no doubt we've done some things wrong. And part of us being able to learn the game is to share these reports with you guys, where I've no doubt the internet will go, you guys have done this wrong, which helps us learn. Um, one of the big confusing things about AOS, at least for me at the moment, is how the battle scrolls list out all their abilities. It kind of sounds like, at least for my ogres, everyone can carry a banner. In fact, they've got two different banners on their abilities. Everyone seems to be able to be a bellower, which reduces bravery. And, and for your dwarves, they have a runic yeah, they have two different types of banners, so... Do, do, are those banners always in effect, and does everybody always have them, or... Is it just one person in the unit? It kind of doesn't sound like that from reading the the scrolls, because in the beginning of this battle report, you might remember, my uh, butcher cast the Great Moor on that unit of... Mm. Uh, Thunderers? Thunderers? Wipe them out. And just gobbled them up. Now, they have a runic icon on their battle scroll, but Scott didn't take that in his army list, so we didn't use it. Um... But it kind of sounds like you can use everything that's on your battle scroll. So that's one thing that's confusing for us for AOS at the moment. I think you put your cannon in the wrong spot. I, I did. It was pretty useless. When I got to use it, it was great. Super and effective, but, you know, it didn't get to fire every turn because, you know, most of the time it was out of range of something. Yeah, and the, the shooting phases really brought me back. The dwarves were brutal in shooting. So it was sort of... We couldn't decide how to determine who won, so we used the method from the little rules pamphlet thing. Uh, and in that case, Viv probably won, because he had more of his models left on the table. Percentage uh, you, you lost more of a percentage yeah, of your models right. than I did, so I, using the pamphlet rules, I score a minor victory. But, but because, from the General's Handbook... Because we were playing a pitch battle, we weren't playing one of the scenarios from the General's Handbook, but all of the scenarios in that... Uh, say to calculate the points cost and it, of, of what was killed. So if, if that's the case, then I won. So and we that, can't decide it. And that sucks because he's got two units on the table that have one model left in that unit. Yeah, but it, do, it, is, it does say units, not So models. he still gets to claim the full points cost of that unit. Um, so I don't know. As we, go, as we can continue to play more games, I think we'll start to play more of the battle plans from the General's Handbook and from the, the Big Book and look at all those victory conditions and, you know, play our way sequentially, hopefully, through each of those battle plans and, and really sort of discover other sides of AOS than just these pitch battle fight to the end games that we've done so far. This is our third game. It is, yep. Um, and I'm looking, I'm loving it. I'm, you know, I didn't really have any sort of, oh, Furnace is dead sort of thing like a lot of people did. Um, and I guess the only thing that sort of I'm disappointed about is that I didn't play this sooner because it's super fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a yeah. nice, quick, simple game. I smashed a glass of beer last night playing. Um, so there we go. There's our first battle report. Uh, hopefully it all comes together nicely during editing and we can find some time to, uh, to do uh, more of them. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. See ya.